Jerry, welcome back to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Thank you for having me. Good to have you here. The last time we were talking to you, you had just uh, released a new story on BBC Africa Eye, which was about children, newborns being trafficked in the country. Now you've released another one, still around children. Tell us about it. Of course, you can tell I'm very... Uh, children are very close to my heart mm. and I wish them all, you know, that they would grow well in a loving, caring environment. So the story I just did that was released recently is one of Tanzania's children being trafficked into the country and they come into Kenya and we've seen them in the streets begging on wheelchairs being pushed. But what's truly happening is that they are, they are cheated, that they are being brought to Kenya to work. Um, their parents are told they, they'll be supported, they'll be educated, and they'll get some money and we'll send some money to you. And the people, at least that we followed, were also disabled. So the story checks out for them because mm. they go tell them even me, I'm a beggar. As they don't say they're beggars. They say even me, I'm disabled. And I um, found work in Kenya. Yeah, I found work in Kenya. Kenyans will support your son or your okay. daughter. Okay, let's start from the beginning. So we see very many people on the streets of Nairobi who are beggars. Many of them are living with disability. They are either being wheeled on a wheelchair or they're being carried around or they're sitting somewhere and then they'll uh, move later in the day. Mm. These are the people that we are talking about. Yes. This is where our story is premised. Yes. Okay. Now we are saying that not all of them are from Kenya. Many of them are not from Kenya. Okay. And then we are saying that those non-Kenyans who are here are not here out of their own free will and understanding that this is what they were coming to do? No. Okay, now tell the story. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got curious after I did the stolen babies. I'd been seeing these children in the streets and wondering, Ay, where do these kids come from? Um, and I mean, we've all seen them all the time. We see them, we, we, we're not bothered anymore. Mm. But I, I just kept wondering, where do they come from? Then eventually I started asking them. I was like, but I can ask them. Mm. So I asked them and they tell me they're from TZ. I'm like, ah, okay. You hear one, you hear two, you hear three, you hear 10. You're like, I, it is Z. How? Mm -hmm. You're disabled. Are you, who are you here with? They say, walikuja na basi. I'm like, okay. Walikuja na nani? Peke angu. It's like they have a script. Okay. So it's a child who came from TZ by bus on their own. How? Like, it didn't check out for me. I was like, mm, mm And where were they going? They were coming to Nairobi mm -hmm. to do what, you know, they laugh. But then you're not, you can't even have a long conversation with them because then either they'll get a phone call or, you know, they'll get, they'll make eye contact with someone because they're not supposed to be talking to anybody. Because well, if anybody, if they're talking to anybody, mm -hmm. they're being asked questions and they should not be having these conversations. Where, Peter? Omba Wende? And this, when we're talking children, what are we talking age of children here? From eight, even seven year olds to 13, 14. There was even 16 year olds, but you know, they're small. Some are really small. Mm. So even when they tell you they're 16, you're like, are you sure you're 16? But I mean, you say you're 16, so, it's, so then you're 16. Mm. Okay. Where are these children living? How are they eating? Under whose, oh, I mean, I shudder to think, but then under whose care are they? So whoever brings them to the country keeps them because you're my, wow. Um, you're my charge. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're their captors. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Captor. Because then they have to keep them close. They have to make sure that they're, they go to work the following day. And since they're the only ones, they're the ones with them, they provide a house for them to stay and they feed them at least a meal a day when they come home in the evening so that they can be able to go back to work the following day. Let me take us through the story and how you develop the story, because then we'll be able to tell how you told the story. So you asked the kids, where do you come from, from Tanzania, came by bus, came alone, and then your curiosity continued. Yeah. Uh -huh. So to, we, we figured that we need to get into this ring. We need to know where exactly are these children staying. So we got one girl, one, one, one person to go and find a job. Mama Fua, in a specific place where, you know, we followed a child and see where they go. We're like, go see if you can be a Mama Fua there. So she got the job. And then 
now we put a camera in, we started having conversations. You can see what these people are doing in the morning, their, their clothes. Some of their clothes were bloody. Mm. By the time this child is leaving the house and coming home, so by the time she's doing laundry, we put a camera, hear the conversations, we see what's going on. But then... Hold on, Jerry, sorry. This Mama Fua is now introduced into the area where these children are living yes okay. is it a house or an estate uh, no no it's not an estate mm -hmm. so they where where we we managed to infiltrate was in kariobangi mm -hmm. and that's and it's a small room i mean the place is in kariobangi it's a small it's a room one one room mm -hmm. yeah that's the living room that's the kitchen that's everything and in one house there could be five children so this um let me, he's called zengo he could have multiple of this so he has several children in this one place and several children in another place. So every morning, there's a minder who will come. Every child will come and will be taken out by their minder, taken to the streets, wherever. Then this minder will watch this child. If they need to be removed, if they need to be checked, you know, make sure that they do their job properly. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening, they take them back home. Home. Okay, you've been calling it a job, Jerry. You've been saying they're doing their job. They're going to work. What is this? They're put in the streets to beg. This person who brings them into the country, that's what they bring them to do. Mm. But they don't make money for themselves. They are forced, they are forced to beg. Mm. They don't have an option. They don't know anybody else but the person who brought them. And now this minder who, who watches over them the whole day and makes sure that they go home in the evening. If they don't get enough money, they get beaten. Like seriously beaten. They could be starved. So tomorrow when you go out in the streets, you have to do better. So there's a structure in this business. There's Zengu, who is the overlord, right? Yeah. Who's the one running the business. And then under Zengu, there are minders yeah. who are like the uh, personal managers yeah. of the subjects. Yeah. So these kids are the subjects. They're taken to the street. They are supposed to beg. And then their collections are taken, of course, by the minders going yeah. back to Zengu. The kids are taken back home. Are they paid a salary or... Are they only being fed? They're just being fed. They're housed and fed. That's it. There's no money that goes to them. There's no money that goes to their parents as promised because that was the promise that was given to them and to their parents. Okay. Have we had a situation where some of the parents or any parent or anyone has actually wondered where their children went to? So I went to Tanzania because I was like, you give up, you give up your children to come to Nairobi. Do you know what's happening? So when I spoke to Farah, he was very clear about where he comes from, about his family. He told me, if you take me to Tanzania, I will take you to my home. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, where is your home? And he tells me, so I write it all down and I go to Tanzania, find a journalist there and I say, I'm looking for this place. Can you take me here? Mm -hmm. So we go, we go, we go. Kijiji in the village, Ukondani Kabisa. Which part of Tanzania? In Mwanza, mm -hmm. further in into Igongwe. So we go there and we look, we check, check. Of course, it was a hit. It was a miss mm. a few times. And then we find the actual place where he comes from. Yeah. Now, when you talk to the people there, they say that Zengo would come. And because he's disabled, there are a lot of disabled children there for some reason. Now, that's a whole other conversation for me. I'm like, why is this the case? Why are there many disabled children in this area? Mm. Yeah, but that's a story for another day that I need to find out. Yeah. So they come and say, it's a very impoverished place. So, and they are Sukumas. They have big families. They have five, I mean, 10, 12 children, mm. one, one wife. Mm. And, and they have multiple wives. So it's, they need to find a way to survive. If they have a disabled child and someone comes and says that we, I can help you take care of this one, you're give him go. to me. Um, I'll go with them to Nairobi. They will be taken care of. The parents will, will accept. It's mm. easy. Mm. And so they give up their children in the hope that they're for a better life. And also because they'll be able to support the family in whatever little way. So they, they willingly give their children because of the condition they're in. But also because they believe that their children will get... So they you have know, no get, idea, really, yeah. the horror that their children are going yeah. to face. Can we take a step back? Before you went to Mwanza, how did you get this information from, what was his name? Farah. Farah. Yeah. Because there's a minder. You're not, allowed to, you're not allowed to speak to anybody for fear of being beaten, things like this. How did you then get the information from, from him about where to go? 
in so Mwanza. So we had this undercover agent who was who was with him mm -hmm. had asked questions. By the time I was meeting him, we we really tried to track him down because they they don't go to the same place all the time, mm -hmm. or they will not be there at the same time. Every so day, even yeah. yeah, it's it's not it's not like clockwork. Some days they leave at four in the morning. Some days at seven in the morning. Some days at five. It it varies. So you never know. So if you think today they came out at four, you'll be there at four. Utaka. Mm. You don't know whether they left or they are still home. And the the undercover agent is not home yet. Is not she, she has not arrived. So you won't know. So it was a lot of misses. And then the day we caught, we caught up with him, then we followed a matatu for so long. By the time he was put in a matatu, then a kashuka. Then he was put in a spot. So we kept now checking with the minder. So the minder put him down. Mm. Then he walked off and went around. He left completely. Mm. So there I walked. I, I did a few laps, you know, mm. Mm. just checking if that guy is appearing. But also I was not alone. So we, want, we needed to be sure that that guy is away. Mm. So by the time I got there, I just spoke to him because I, it, I, I felt I was in the clear. Mm. I could talk to him and that's when he told me all that. Mm -hmm. I just needed that one moment to be able to have that conversation with him. Mm -hmm. Also to just um, confirm what he'd been telling the undercover agent if the story that this is where I come from. I want to go home. I want to see my mom. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So regardless of how things bad things were back home, they'd rather go back home than this. You know what shocked me? Mm. I asked him how long he'd been in Kenya. First, I asked him how old he was. He laughed. Then he said he was seven. Then I'm like, no. Then he said, I'm ten. Then I'm like, no. Then he said, Acha <laughs> Sidri. And for me, I'm like, oh, yeah. Mm. Do you know how long you've been in Kenya? He said, no. So I didn't know how old he was. Because when you look at him, he's not a baby. He's not mm. a child. He's not ten. He's not even 14 years old. Yeah. He's older. But he had lost sense of all that. Mm. Did he have any education? No. No, he didn't have any education. Never been to school? No. So back to City's question. When you went back to Mwanza and you established this is where this child had come from, and they explained to you how the children end up going to Kenya with Zango, mm. do they have any concern? Have they been asking themselves how their child is doing? Is Zango sending money? Is he supposed to be sending money? Do they ask? Do they follow up? They or do, because uh -huh. when they come, when they leave, when Zengo leaves with the child, they give the exchange numbers. I'll be okay. calling you, mm. and then I'll be coming to see you. Mm -hmm. But once Zengo is gone, he's gone. Then they willingly give up their child, so they are left with this guilt. If they go to report, what end our semenini? So mm. they are afraid. Mm. Yeah. Then, even getting to Zengo has disconnected. So they, the they can they never got, contact. The number they got from Zengo is no longer is no longer in service. Yeah. Okay. At that point, when they were giving the child, was were they given something? Was there some sort of inducement? Like Zengo has come with, you know, uh, Gunio of Unga. Something. Promises, promises. And you see, mm. Zengo has proof that this works because he. Amenunua shamba. He's living Ame evidence. Jenga. Mm. He's living evidence that this yeah, works because yeah. I have gone to Kenya yeah. and look at me now. He's also brought adults. Okay. So you'll see also these adults, um, oh. either they're pushing themselves yeah. or they are on fours. So they, they are also proof that it works because they've also, when I do Likanaka sauce mm. back home. Back home. Yeah. Because they've bought land, they've jengered, they're putting their kids through school. So how much would Farah, um, I mean, on a, on a day, were you able to find out how much would Farah or the likes of him make for Zengo or whomever on a, on a daily? On an average, they would make maybe 1500 2000 ch One day. child. One, one child. One child. 2000 per child per day. Mm. And we're talking about many children. So, of, of course, you investigated Zengo a bit further. Yeah. So, how many children do you estimate... Uh, under his care or control that's hard to tell because of course he denies completely mm. and we he lived with farah in the same place for 10 years yeah mm -hmm. with ten that years. for 10 years with farah with farah mm. mm -hmm. um the other kids some kids come and after a while they run away for whatever reason they're like you know what i can do this by myself i don't need this 
and maybe they keep the money for themselves. So mm. maybe they go back home. I don't know. Mm. So it's hard to tell, put a number on it. What I know is that the day we went to, for that morning, not the raid even, one morning we just went to check how many kids are coming down from this one building, and we counted over 30, and that's one building. 30. 30. They are wheeled down, they are put on a boda boda by themselves with a crutch. Mm -hmm. Then when they get there, others come, they take, they are taken by minders. We counted more than 30 kids in that one building. And that's not where Zengo was. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't know. Zengo's kids, Zengo's people, connections, how deep. Is Zengo Kenyan? Your guess is that, no, he's not Kenyan. So the, the documentary has Zengo and has another guy called Kamwa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And both of them, Kamwa has a place even in Moya. In Moya. Yes. Kirinyaga County. He that's where he takes he takes some of his people there, of his of the kids that he brings there. Hmm. Okay. So you had a conversation with Zengo. At some point you confronted him. How did that go? Oh. What, how where where how did you even start find him and then say, now let's 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 have a chat about what this is that is going on? I didn't speak to Zengo. Mm. The time I met Zengo was when he was being arrested. Mm -hmm. But there was something about him that the arrogance, mm. because we were there with so many police. So, okay, sorry, Jerry. How did it get to the point then when he was being arrested? What happened? What transpired between now finding this out and then getting to the point where there was a raid, like you said? So in our conversations, or at least we, not personal, with the undercover agent, mm. He said that he really gets beaten when he doesn't bring enough money. We're like, what? This guy, we can't know this and just continue this investigation because like nothing, yeah. of whatever yeah, it may we be. Didn't. We're like, we need to get this kid out of this place. So that's when we're like, whatever else we would have found out, we will never know whether he'd have taken us into another ring or shown us more of his property or shown us exact, you know, how you get into Tanzania, what you do and bring children because what she was trying to do uh, was to try and start becoming um, or what she was telling him mm. so that she can get his trust is that I wanted to start this business. Mm. So you tell mm. me how this works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a conversation that was happening. But when Farah says he's being, he gets beaten, we're like, we can't sit with this information. So we go to the cops mm -hmm. and the cops were like, you need to get this kid out. Mm. And then that's when, that's how they, he got um, arrested. And still at that point, he denied everything. Hey, now for me, that I was shocked because he had this confidence and arrogance that Atam Kikuja, Kiwa Wengi, what are you trying to show me? I'm like, why would you get be so confident about you're in trouble, man? Mm. <laughs> you're in deep shit. Mm. So he was taken by Forgive cops. My <laughs> yes. Taken by cops, taken to a police station. Yes. Do you know how long he lasted mm. there? Do you know what's happened since He's then? He's still there. He was taken to court. Mm -hmm. uh, Farah testified. His wife testified. Mm. And it's uh, a solid case. He, his own wife. His, his own wife this, testified, this, testified this against him. This person has a, has a wife. Yes, he had a wife. You're just asking. He had a wife. And she testified. She testified. She, she knew about the him. business. She was there. She lives with him. She lives with him. Okay. The story of Kamwa. Kamwa is, is uh, Zengo's buddy. Mm -hmm. One of them brought the other, introduced them into this business. Either brought them, they saw, they made some money, told him, actually, you can come with kids and they can work for you. Mm. You know, this is, let me show you. So one of them showed the other. I don't know who showed who. But Kamwa is... He was very calm. You know, it's like he's trained his people. He knows it will not stick. Don't put up a fight. If they come for you, cooperate. Give them everything they ask for because that's exactly what he did. He made it so easy. He said, these are my papers. That's the book where he writes his um, transactions uh -uh. for how many, ch which child brings, how much, when, mm -hmm. how much I pay the minders, blah, blah, blah. He kept his records. Zengo, that was and another he pays story. the minders. He pays them. Does he pay the children? No, he don't. They don't. The children are not to so be paid. So the children are not to be paid. No, They're the children to are to be fed and to housed. Be fed, housed. That's it. And occasionally clothed. And uh, yeah, depending with what you know, you need to look the part also yeah. to be able to fetch 
Of course. Yeah. The mo uh, mo most you can fetch. Yeah. This is slavery, you know. Of the worst possible Absolutely. kind. Absolutely. There's so many things that are going on here at the same time of criminal nature, right? Yeah. Uh, and then unraveling the layers. I'm sure you had to do that in telling this story as well. We're talking about trafficking. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, yes, modern day slavery. Mm. We're talking about, you know, um, abuse. maltreatment, abuse, abuse of abuse children. Of children. Yeah. rights. Of, of yeah. rights in yeah. terms of what you cannot, cannot do, where you live, what you eat. And then your right to not be beaten. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, abused in that way. Yeah. There's so many layers of crimes that are taking place here. And these are just what makes me a little bit more scared. Yeah, is that this is two individuals only. Only, only. who've just been exposed. Who've been yes. exposed. Jerry, yes. as you started working on this, I'm sure you also discovered that there are other stories that have been told mm -hmm. of similar yes. stories that have been yes. told before. Yes. When you were going to the cops, did they act or sound or seem surprised when you were reporting this? No, they were not surprised. Are they because did they seem aware that this before. has been going on? Yeah. So what makes me sad is that it's, they're aware, but they haven't done anything about it. Because it's, it's not the first time this story is being told. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But why are we shocked about this, yet these stories have been told before, plus we also see these children on the streets. Okay. I think I'll put you guys to task. Who you should get here is the Department of Children's Services. What is, their role? Those. what is so their responsibility? Have you reached out to those other offices? Starting from the local chief in Kariobangi, the local administration must know. I mean, neighbors, have they raised the question of they seen? Of course, we live with all so many of these disabled of people. And, all disabled going and they're in our neighborhood and they're clearly not Kenyan. Is that an issue that has been raised by the neighbors? Is it, has it gone to the local chief? Has it gone to the local MCA? Has it risen up? the official ranks has it gone to the department of children's services the kenya national commission on human rights oh all those have i they? believe they all know i haven't had conversations with all of them but i believe they all know because it is not new and because like you said they live in those houses these people see i asked i was told when i'd gone to um when we were doing one of those you know recce's there that one house one shark like that goes for about 3500 rent now, a month rent per month one shark mm. but if that shark stays uh houses four five seven people you will pay three five per head oh. for the same space oh so the three five is per person per person per person depending uh, if, if, this if this landlord if this landlord sees because he cannot get more property, you will pay for it. But also begs the question, police know that these people are there. Mm. When they've gone to, when they've done, whether let, let's call it a raid, when they've gone there, these people need to show papers. What, what are you doing in this country? Mm -hmm. So when they go there, from what I was told, is that because there are no papers, they get some money also. For usulize maswali, si unajua sina makaratasi, so nidi kusaidi aji. Jump and pass. So they give money. So it's a whole. It's a network. Yeah. It's a network. Let's take a break. It's twenty-eight minutes to ten. Jerry Mwangi has done an expose on BBC Africa Eye, exposing the exploitation of street children who are being brought from Tanzania, put in the streets of Nairobi as beggars, and they are getting nothing out of it. They are basically children slaves how do you watch this it's it's available on online it's available on youtube what's the title forced to beg forced to beg is a title that you go onto youtube and search for this and then you watch it we want to open up the phone lines for you to react to this conversation 0719 after this quick break 0719 this is the situation room the only way to start your day. It's called Forced to Beg and you can find it on YouTube. It's talking about how children, disabled children, are brought by unscrupulous people from Tanzania, brought to Nairobi. They are kept in some shacks and then they are brought out every morning, put on the streets of Nairobi as beggars. You go there and you give your arms to these beggars. The money does not go to these children. It actually goes back to their owners because they're not even their mindless. They're the people who are controlling them. So yeah. it tells a very, very deep and painful story. And that's why we'd like you to call in and uh, react to it. 0719-012-600-CT. 
you know, this also speaks volumes on how our society and our community understand, internalize, and relate to people with a disability. Mm. Mm. If these people were not disabled, would people respond or react differently? Sometimes when you talk about the disabled in mm. the community or people living with disabilities, is it something that subconsciously people have sort of like set aside so the normal responses you have towards a fellow human being are not the same responses you, you would have towards them? Because in the full glare of the public, it isn't as though they're living in some desert island. They're living mm. with other people. Mm. Yep. Mm. And they see this every single day. True. Surely, those numbers of people, and this isn't a home that deals with people living or manages the lives of people living with disabilities. They can see it. Mm. And yet, no one raises an eyebrow. It is considered a non-issue. The only interaction that people seem to have is treating them as a commercial venture, mm -hmm. units, items from which you can actually derive an income. Because at some level, these children have been completely dehumanized. Because everything that is being said, the only thing that they seem to get is the ability for them to stay alive because when they're alive is when they can actually generate an income. Mm. Yeah. I sense though that the bigger issue here is institutional failure. Correct. Because in very many ways, if you look at, we see children's homes sprouting up, there are those that are formal and then there are others that come up in various estates, mm. especially in the informal settlements, you will find children's homes. Yeah. Yes. And people know, okay, so these are children's homes, this person is a philanthropist this person is somebody who actually just felt something they started they opened up their home they bring in kids they help them mm. so for very many people it's possible that they think well this person actually is helping disabled kids and helps them to transport them to go and earn a living mm. well they sometimes they make noise children are disciplined the children are being disciplined you know there's maybe that assumption and then in my mind i'm thinking that probably as neighbors you have asked questions, but you think, I see cops, I see the chief, mm. they must be aware, mm. so it must be legal, so okay, yeah. it continues. Yeah. But it's because the chief and the police officer, and then the other people who are there, the welfare people, the uh, Department of Children's Services, and everybody else is not doing their job. Mm. And yet everybody else is expecting them to do their job. This is where the bigger failure is. And it's institutions that are allowing this to happen. Let's go to the phone lines and pick your reactions to this. It's been a while since we heard from you, John. Good morning. Morning, morning. How are you? Very well, thanks. Yeah, I've gone to the ground. Uh, somebody has told me that the people on the ground want me. No, we talk to the people but, on the ground on a daily basis. You must have been underground. <laughs> but when I went to the ground, I only got very few votes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> told you, you went underground. <laughs> <laughs> now this 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 is a very sad situation mm. very sad about a year ago mm -hmm. I, I i i did my own investigation yeah. uh on bagadi way mm. okay raila odinga way mm. just at, at the city mochari mm. mm -hmm. there are also so many children who are dropped there in the mm. morning mm. and uh i i I, 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 I got curious and I wanted to find out where do they come from and what do, who, who brings them here. So I, I, as I tried to talk to them, just the way uh, the lady is talking about, is very difficult. They, they, they don't allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I, I went to Kilimani police station. I talked to the OCS and I asked him, there's something wrong here. And there's somebody taking advantage of the children here. Is there something you can do about it? Mm. The officers told me this is not Kilimani. Uh, you have to talk to Upper Hill Police. Mm -hmm. He gave me the number to the OCS in Upper Hill Police. Mm. I called the OCS uh, uh, Upper Hill Police Station. And the OCS, what I found interesting, the OCS told me, Unajua tumejaribu sana kushika ule mta na letanga watoto hapa. Na tumeshindua. Mm. Ati tunawekanga ambush, sa zingine tunaweka saa kumina moja, sa zingine tunaweka saa mbili, sa zingine tumeshindua kabisa kushika ule mta na leta hawa toto. So I asked him, the, the easiest thing is just to get those children. 
Uh-huh. And you see if there'll be anybody who will come to claim them or to, 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 to try and get them out of the police station. And the, the OCS told me, Sasa here at Wesley Fine, that it took you what you were, it's a bit children's department. Mm-hmm. So what the, what Andere is saying is very true. This thing is, is deep. It, it even, actually, the impression I got is that whoever is dropped those children, or whoever is in charge of those children there, uh, has connections is even well with the protected. police. Is well protected, I can tell you. Mm. Because the way I was taken down, because I was calling this guy almost every day, the OCS. But the way I was taken around, I just realized this thing is, is deeper than we think. Yep. It, it actually is a business. Mm. And there are people who are benefiting from it. It's unfortunate. Even this morning, as I passed there, I, I saw those children. Mm. It's at sad. The, at, at, just at the roundabout. It's sad. John, thank you. Let me pick our callers okay. from uh, thank you, elsewhere. Thank you. Okari in Nairobi, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well, thanks. Um, what Jerry has done with this expose is that uh, she has opened a Pandora's box. We've been having a big problem, generally, around having children on the street. Uh, nobody really wants to touch it because of the protection and the network that is involved with these children, right? But my question is, there is a Street Families Reputation Trust Fund yep. that, that is in place that um, and money to do their job every, every month. And then there is the director for ch- for children services. Mm. They know. And then there is the county government of Nairobi, uh, especially the, the children and youth section. They yeah. know. And yeah. uh, I don't want to mention them. These are people I work with on a normal day. Mm. But when you start asking about the children on the street, especially those who are begging, you'll be told this is untouchable. We can't go into that section. Mm. Right? My other question, my other issue is with the Kenyan public, right? They have made it very normal to give children money on the street. Yeah. Right? So if you make it very normal to give children money on the street, then it means you'll have an influx of more children coming into the street because they know they're going to beg and get money. Mm. The, The Street Families Reputation Trust Fund has the mandate to create awareness of, of how to handle or how to work with street children, especially to the public. Mm. But if you ask them what they have done for the last year, not much, right? Not even very many Kenyans know that that uh, kind of agency exists. Exists. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Thank you very much, Okari. You're welcome. Asante. Hilda in Eldoret. Hello. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Hilda, you've heard the story. What's your reaction to this? Oh, I've heard the story. You know, it's not new because the place that Njeri has mentioned mm. is where I've come from. Like, I know the real story, like what happened, and this is something that I've grown with it since I was born. Tell us about it. Hello? Tell us about it. And so you find, like, even after Njeri has aired all the story, like, it, I wouldn't be shocked if I find, like, mm-hmm. the guy that was arrested that is outside cause for the longest time that I've lived there. It's something that has been happening. And even certainly the chief doesn't know, even the landlord cause, even the normal people like us, the Kenyans, then somehow, somehow we get money from them. Senior. Like, even, not even children, like, even the older the older men who are being sent to town to go and in it, and is it boring or what? Begging. Begging. The money. Mm. Like for the because now I'm twenty four and it's something that I found it existing why Hilda, where did you I grow up? Here. I grew in Kariobangi. So Kariobangi in your home? I can you bank into your home. So, no, 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 no,
ile kulipata mzizi gani za kuja Kenya kwa za end mtaenda wengine wako privilege mm. waliletwa na wazazi so wataenda tule but some days kuka mamande hawatawahi kuja shule cause the school knows kwenye how watu walilala on sunday mm. but even like utapata hata wakiwa shule no one will take action cause i bet even like police poli, policemen themselves kuna vile wanasaidika so it's a, it's a, it's a business within that area so if you stop them Hilda do police mm-hmm. do police come to those houses where these children live they know but even they come they know and the chief no they know hakuna mtu nyameichi kajobange and korokoto ko wako huko mm. ati hajui what kind of business they do so even the neighbors know that these children the are neighbors, here to make money even us uh, even us mm. we know and we know the kind of business that's why hata nikapatana na yeye town i don't mind because at the end of the day who am i to say anything and i know he is so she day na kuanga to 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 know the 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 big guy who is involved in this because mm. at the end of the day ndio wataletwa but there must be someone who is in charge of them mm. you can't get such a protection if you two and you are in a mm. foreign country sure. mm. you that's can true. that's true Hilda, thank, you. thank you a, mm. yeah. Yeah. thank you for sharing your story Hilda. thank you very much for calling in mwalimu irongo in kisi yes good morning good morning mm. I know time is running out. Let me just summarize my point. Mm. If you walk along the hospital road in Kisi, Kisi town, mm-hmm. you will see some disabled men and women along that road. Mm-hmm. Now, there was a time I heard through uh, media that uh, some of these people are not from our country. And because they are begging, I tried to interview one of them and I realized they don't, they cannot speak any of our languages. Kiswahili is the only one they can speak. Lakini ukumuza kweru ni wapi? Ajui. So I suspected this might be out of our country. Mm-hmm. But uh, I hope not to digress. I want to talk about the, our security. Mm-hmm. Why does it take the BBC to come and uh, expose this? Because I also remember it took the BBC uh, to come and expose people who are selling human body parts in Tanzania some time back. So I think one of the things that should be done is to disband everything called Nyumbakumi. Mm-hmm. For now, because it's not, it's not working it's working in tanzania in tanzania i'm very sure all of us oh, yeah. you go there you start walking around mm-hmm. you are stopped yes. who are you where are you mm-hmm. coming from yes but in kenya here these mbaku people are here taking bribes mm-hmm. colluding with the police to tell them where there is Changa, where there is a, some sort of crime so that they can cash in out of it mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sorry that this Nyumbakumi and whatever they have brought about, all of them, the characters are those that are questionable. So we need a more serious approach to this. Mm. Those who went to Tanzania to benchmark uh, how to select these people did a very shoddy job. So it's a leadership problem. It's mm. a security problem. Mm. We need to get more serious after this bonding all these nubakumi things we have around they're very useless hmm. asante mwalimu thank you good day so let's forget about it i mean let's just redo the whole thing from the ground up hmm. when you approach the police and now zengo was taken in he's gone through a court process even his own wife coming to testify against him did you see any change Callers have called in and said these kids are still in the streets. I and really, the particular kids that you were, that you were, you had identified. The ones we identified. Were they taken in? They were taken in, mm-hmm. and they were put in a rescue center, and some of them were repatriated. Some they can't. You know, it's a process. Yeah. By the time you locate who their family is, where they are, 
And then you see it's now government, it's Kenya and Tanzania. Yep. So some of them were repatriated. Some, their families have still not been found, mm. so they can't be thrown back into the streets. So what role has the children's department had in all this? I see. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm enraged because this is the time that they need to be coming out and speaking and we see them. Otherwise, that department should be disbanded. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. But you know, Irongo has said something that's really interesting because we're looking at essentially what should be social protection. Yes. Right? And uh, the question will arise that if really these things that have been set up to watch over the next 10 houses in your, mm. you know, in your vicinity, uh, nobody's asking questions. That in the neighborhood where I am living, why is it that there should be this house? Because you cannot tell me if you were able to notice 30 children coming out of a building. On a daily, you cannot tell me that the people who live in this neighborhood don't see them. They do. They, they're not aware of what's going on. But maybe the they police, do. Maybe they do, but they feel they cannot do anything about um, it. Maybe they have. They Perhaps have they have, mm. but nothing happens. The lady, the, the young lady, the 24-year-old that called, mm. yep. she said she's seen this growing up. Mm. The cops know, the chief knows. So, Utendo wambi nani? There's you're telling them stuff they know. You, what you're saying, that it's been institutionalized. Mm. There's an institutional problem because the authorities that need to be doing something are not doing. If you report, it's like you're saying, there's a new lot. Yeah. Mm. So they come and cash in. <laughs> so, um, idea, and John has taken it business. to the cops. Yeah. yeah. Okay. OCS Upper Hill tells him these kids at uh, uh, the roundabout mm. near City Mortuary and the other side on Timor. What are we doing about it? You know, this one's, eh? Mm. Hey, we have really tried. Eh? But then this isn't one. it a realization that really society has gone to the dogs? If yeah. you're seeing, <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. If you're seeing a situation whereby children uh, and then the the very service that should be taking care of them is telling you, well, we, we really uh, can't do anything about it. You've got a children's department that was institutionalized mm. to take care of matters yeah. like this, doing nothing about it. Then really, I mean, if that's the picture that we paint, then I mean, things have really uh, deteriorated to a point whereby only an act of God really then is going to be able to sort this out. But I do think that the conversation needs to be kept alive. A thought running through my mind eh, is, mm -hmm. you know, you feel it in your heart that you want to help. So what when you, you see think? this beggar on the street, yeah. you give them what you have. Yes. yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Are we enabling exactly. this business? Because I thought about I thought about my 12-year-old every time we're, and she'll say, you know, mom, give them something. I mean, look at this one. doesn't have a hand or whatever but then you think about it now based on what you've said the money is not going to this the, the money yeah. is not going to this child it's going to somebody else you know me i'm, I'm conflicted hmm? yeah because you mean, do that really? oh, you no, give you, you don't give, give. they're doomed it's either not, way it's not yes. just giving i specifically get change mm. yes so that when that. i see them because mm. the discomfort i feel when someone mm. comes to ask me for whether well, it's 100 shillings and i know i have it but it's in a thousand shilling phone. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You want to break it down yeah. and say, okay. What? Look, not every beggar is from Tanzania. True. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. It's very true. true. So now I can't tell. Yeah. And it's not saying that these guys from Tanzania are the only ones who are being misused yeah. and not abused. True. They're not no, true. No. We've that, heard the story. There could be the Kenyans. Indians who are also going through the yeah. same thing. Yes. Or, or Kenyans who are in the dragnet as well. Yeah. 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 So, are we enabling? Oh, yeah. Isn't it, <laughs> Jerry? Isn't it? That when you're, because you have already established that these children are not the recipients of this money that is being gotten. They have to hand the money over. There's a minder who doesn't allow them to talk to people. They're given one meal a day for crying out loud. And then they're beaten if they don't bring in the 2,000 shillings per day. The money's not going to them. So here you are and it bleeds your heart because that's another thing that they play on, on your psychology. Yeah. A disabled child. Mm. My God, you're going to give what you have, right? Mm. But then it's not going to them. I don't even allow myself to go that route. <laughs> No, maybe we should. No, I mean, maybe. as in, I know I understand, mm. but s when you see someone, when I see, let me talk about myself, someone begging that critical thinking, you don't want to, of it disappears, it, it disappears. And that's what they've yeah. done, that it you, disappears. That's the, but that's the point, CT. Yeah, yeah. Taking yeah. They know you're not going to think that way yep. when you see a child. Your, your, your natural emotion is going to kick in, yeah, yeah. 
and they know this. They're taking advantage of it, using the children. Now that's the worst part. Yes. That that child that you're feeling sorry for is actually a slave. Jerry, thank you for joining us today. I wish I wasn't here. <laughs> this is a very difficult conversation and we talk and then what? Mm. You know, we have to continue to see the children in the streets. We what now? What we, next? We will look for the children's department mm. and the individuals please. who yeah. run please. it and we will ha have this conversation. Yeah. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. The conversation, uh, this story is available on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search Forced to Beg and you will find this story by BBC Africa Eye. The journalist who did the story is Jerry Mwangi and her colleagues.